Hello and welcome to Tech Simplified TV. This is the seventh episode in VLSI Milestone series. In last six episodes, we have discussed how industry has adopted new device structure or new material to continue with the route of device scaling. Today, in a brief discussion, we'll try to understand how conventional lithography technique has reached its limit and industry has wisely chosen a new technique called multiple patterning lithography. At this milestone, adaptation happened in the technique of pattern transferring. So, if you are interested, stay tuned till the end of the video. Now, let's take a look at the pointers we are going to discuss in today's episode. First, PLSA milestone and multiple patterning. Second, lithography. Third, different types of lithography. In these two slides, we will try to understand basic of lithography. Next, what is multi patterning and why multi patterning is required? In these two slides, we will try to understand what multi patterning is and what is importance in VLSI technology. After that, phase shift mask and optical proximity correction. Next, layout decomposition. After that, double patterning. And finally, triple and quadruple patterning. We are done with this slide. We will move to the next slide. This is the diagram we are taking reference for last few episodes. Here we can see at 20 nanometer timeline 2013 double patterning. Then at 10 nanometer fin fed double patterning 2017 and 7 nanometer fin fed quadruple patterning at 2019. So these are the timeline and technology node where multiple patternings are used. Moore's law has been driving and guiding force for last few decades for enhancement of device performance. We all know that. As minimum feature size has reduced, CMOS process has been greatly challenged by patterning technique of such miniature device dimension because it's something like trying to draw a thinner line with a wider brush. As we know, in a painter's kit, there are different brushes for different types of stroke and purpose. So in case of this multiple patterning and this challenge, it's basically the light which has a wavelength of 193 nanometer that is getting used for transferring feature size, which is fraction of it. So that is the challenge. Due to the fundamental optical resolution limit, the 193 nanometer immersion lithography can only achieve the minimum pitch about 80 nanometer using single exposure. So if that is the challenge, there could be two solutions. Either some alternative technology has to be in introduced to do to pattern devices of feature size 22 nanometer, 14 nanometer with that 193 nanometer lithography, either different type of technology required or the light source must be have a different wavelength. To continue the technology scaling in 22 nanometer, 14 nanometer and beyond with the 193 nanometer lithography, multiple patterning technologies have been developed to obtain finer pitches because tool with alternative light source was not available for production. So, multi patterning became a necessary step as next generation extreme ultraviolet lithography tools were not yet ready for production. So, either we have to reduce the wavelength of that light source which is used to pattern the device or we have to implement some alternative technology. Multiple patterning is that alternative technology. There are two main types of multiple patterning lithography based on repeated process and based on self aligned spacer process. We are done with this slide. We will move to the next slide. Lithography. Lithography is the process of transferring patterns of geometric shapes in a mask to a thin layer of radiation sensitive material or resist covering the surface of the semiconductor wafer. Semiconductor wafer is covered with photoresist. These are radiation sensitive and pattern is on mask and light is used to transfer that pattern on the substrate. So here it's substrate and photoresist is applied. This is photoresist and now exposed to light through a mask. So there are openings where light is directly touching the photoresist and there are masks. Depending on the type of photoresist, two types of photoresist that is positive photoresist and negative photoresist, depending on that the pattern will get formed. Like in positive photoresist, when the material is exposed to light, it just gets soluble in the solvent. And rest of the part where it's not exposed to light, it's get hardened and just opposite in case of negative photoresist. When the photoresist is exposed to light, that portion is get hardened and the rest of the portion is soluble in the solutions. 
An IC fabrication facility requires a clean room, particularly during lithography process. Dust particles settling on semiconductor wafers and lithographic mass can cause defects and device. So clean room is required. Otherwise, in atmosphere, anytime dust particles are there, clean room has a highly controlled environment where dust particle very negligible. That's why it's named clean room. Performance of a lithographic exposure is determined by three parameters. One is resolution, registration and throughput. Resolution is defined to be minimum feature dimension that can be transferred with high fidelity to a resist film on a semiconductor wafer. This is the minimum feature size which can be patterned. Registration is the measure of how accurately patterns on successive masks can be aligned or overlaid with respect to previously defined patterns on the same web. In CMOS, multiple layers are there, multiple masks are there, one after one, successive masks are overlaid and pattern is transferred. How successfully that can be accurately that pattern can be transferred that is measured by registration. Now throughput, throughput is the number of wafers that can be exposed per hour for a given mask level and is thus a measure of efficiency of the lithographic process. These are the three parameters by which the excellence of a lithographic exposure is determined. Now we are done with this slide, we will move to the next slide. Different types of lithography. Optical lithography. Majority of lithographic equipment for IC fabrication is optical equipment using light in the ultraviolet range of the EM spec. And there are two different wavelengths are used that is DUVL and UVL. Uses control 254 to 193 nanometer light to create pattern and UVL uses 13.9 nanometer light to create pattern on silicon wafers. So UVL wavelength is close to X ray. UV lithography reduces number of mask count. In later slide, we will understand why we are mentioning this point because since uv lithography tool is not available industry move to multiple patterning so multiple patterning require more number of mask and steps if uv is used more steps and masks are not required UVL more expensive than other system for microchip lithography. X-ray lithography, ion lithography and electron beam lithography. X-ray lithography, here X-ray is used and all the materials like resist, mask, everything is composed of everything is X-ray sensitive. Uses X-rays, X-ray sensitive special resist, a mask composed of X-ray absorbing material, pattern on thin membrane that is X-ray transparent, often made of low atomic number elements like silicon and boron. Ion lithography. Ion lithography can achieve higher resolution than optical X-ray or electron beam lithographic techniques because ion undergo no diffraction and scatter much less than electron. Electron beam lithography. Direct writing lithographic process uses a focused beam of electrons to form patterns. Electron beam lithography is not suitable for high volume manufacturing because of its limited throughput. These are different types of lithography. Now depending on exposure method, three types of printing are there in optical lithography. Contact printing. Proximity printing and projection printing. Contact printing, quickly connected. And proximity printing, there is a difference here. And projection printing is a more complex. Thing. So we are done with this slide. We will move to the next slide. What is multi patterning? Industry faced a challenge in patterning feature size, which is fraction of wavelength of the patterning light. The light which is getting used to pattern a feature size, the wavelength is higher compared to the feature size. That is the challenge. In such situation, UVL is not available. Industry move to multi-patterning. Multi-patterning is a class of technology developed for photolithography to enhance the feature density. A single lithographic exposure may not be enough to provide sufficient resolution. Multiple patterning is a technique that overcomes the lithographic limitation in chip manufacturing process. Single exposure 193 nanometer wavelength lithography reached its physical limit at 40 nanometer half pitch. Multiple patterning enables chip makers to image IC designs at 20 nanometer and below. There are two main categories of multi patterning pitch splitting and spacer. Pitch splitting includes double and triple patterning and spacer involves self-aligned double patterning and self-aligned quadruple patterning. If we need to transfer a single layer, it's not transferred in one go. In pitch splitting, in multiple steps, it transferred because limitation of the wavelength. Now let's see how it get done. Pitch splitting also double exposure or double patterning. 
Now this is the substrate, this is the device area, this is the mask, this is first mask. This is our final pattern we have to transfer. Using first mask, what we do, this is first, this is the first level of exposed areas. Another mask is used. More areas are exposed to light and patterns are transferred. So this is the final pattern that is transferred to the wafer. So first changes are exposed with first mask. Another mask is used to expose another set of trenches and finally developed. Although this final pattern which has been transferred on wafer that is not transferred in one go in multiple steps, double steps. Here that is double exposure. Now double patterning. It's here it's exposed twice. Here it's patterned twice. Mask, first set of mask, second set of mask. Now it's hard mask and it's photo resist. So first pattern, the so first level of print trenches and etch hard mask. Trenches are printed and hard mask are etched. Again, that trenches are coated with photoresist and second level of exposure are there and second resist is there. Now, hard mask is again etched and device layer is also hard mask and device layer both are etched. So, this is the final pattern that has been transferred by two different mask and pattern twice. That is double patterning. Now, spacer patterning. Photoresist is there. Photoresist is patterned. Now that is trimmed to expose more area. Now hard mask is etched. On hard mask, on both sides, spacers are formed. Next, hard mask is stripped off. Once hard mask is stripped off, the spacers are remaining and depending on their positions, the rest of the substrate is patterned and spacer is stripped off. That is spacer. This patterning is done with the help of spacer. That is spacer pattern. We are done with this slide. We will move to the next slide. Why multi-patterning is required? The so Rayleigh criteria specifies the minimum separation between two light sources that may be resolved into distinct object. Critical dimension or resolution is defined as K1 into lambda divided by Na. K1 is process related factor, lambda is wavelength. So feature size is constantly dropping. Although critical dimension we have to, if we want to match the critical dimension with feature size which we require that either we have to increase Na, decrease K1 or decrease lambda. Na cannot be increased beyond 0 0.93. It will reduce the depth of focus and sharpness of the image printed become less. So that will be blur and proper shape will not get transferred. Now reducing lambda below 193 nanometer results in lot of technical issues, cost, risk, throughput, many things. That is also not possible. So reducing K1 is a good option. Although in single patterning, K1 is restricted to minimum of 0.25. It cannot go beyond. If we use multiple patterning, then K1 decreases from 0.25. So that can be an option. So this is a chart where it shows from 1990 to 2011, feature sizes continuously reduced. Now, if a pitch could not be achieved in a single lithography step, the design is split over two lithography layers so that the minimum pitch is relaxed with respect to the target pitch. So, if that is the final pattern we want on the silicon wafer, although the minimum critical dimension of the available lithography process is bigger than that, what we can do in two or three layer, we can transfer it where minimum pitch on the final pattern is this one. Although the pitch for each mask is just double of it. So we can already half that. If that is the minimum distance in which this is the minimum distance we have to maintain so that the light source can be resolved into two distinct objects. So we cannot reduce that. We can use multiple layer of mask. So mask zero is transferring these two part and these two are transferred by mask one. That is basically multi-patterning, not in one go, in multiple run. In this way, the effective K1 of total process, that is the combination of two lithography steps, can drop below 0.25 for a single patterning process. The increased pitch size enables higher resolution and better printability. So we are done with this slide. We will move to the next slide. Phase shift mask and optical proximity correction. Phase shift mask or PSM 
is used to alter the phase of light passing through some areas of the mask. Phase change modifies the way light is diffracted. As a result, the focusing effect reduces. The downside of using phase shift technique is that masks are more difficult and expensive to make. So these are the exposure area and we want that if that is the exposure area that should be transferred on the wafer. Although it's reached the wafer because of these consecutive wave superposition of that we expect peak to be like this although for superposition the peak become here and intensity is maximum at here. So if we apply phase shifter in one of the exposure so this wave is just shifted and superposition of these two become like this and intensity become higher at these two point where we want it. So that can happen. Phase shift mask is useful in that way. An optical proximity correction is an enhancement technique. What design we have, we need to transfer it on mask that is on mask and when it transferred on wafer that exactly doesn't get translated on wafer. So if dotted portion is the expected one and the green one is, is what we get. With OPC what we do, we change the pattern on the mask a little bit like corners this way so that a more accurate pattern is transferred on the wafer or we can compensate whatever non ideality is getting transferred by the process. If we change the mask, the effective pattern transferred on wafer is changed. A photolithography enhancement technique used to offset the op optical proximity effect. Photo mask patterns transferred onto a photoresist under insufficient resolution development inaccuracies. In OPC, mask geometry is modified to compensate for pattern transferred non idealities we actually modify the mask geometry so that a better or more accurate pattern transferred on the wafer that is optical proximity correction we are done with this slide we will move to the next slide now layout decomposition layout decomposition is splitting one layer into multiple masks for multiple patterning lithography one of the most fundamental problem is to decompose the layout into specific number of masks such that each mask should be able to manufactured under current lithography. If that is the pattern we have to transfer and this is the minimum pitch and we split it into two different masks already minimum pitch for each mask is increasing here. When there is not enough distance between two patterns different masks should be used to print them. It is possible that given masks are not enough to print specific features which result in conflicts. Thus one basic objective for layout decomposition is to avoid conflict. Since multiple layers are used, some features cannot be transferred this way so conflict could be there. Avoiding conflict is a big issue in layout decomposition method. If that is the design we intend for and in double patterning we decompose the whole layer into two then this portion this red with color code these are patterned in one go and these are patterned in one go. So that is the splitting distance in double patterning and if we do it with triple patterning or split the whole thing into three different masks that is these two in one layer, these two in second mask, these layers are in third mask then splitting distance actually increases. We are done with this slide we will move to the next slide that is double patterning. Double patterning is a technique used in lithographic process for sub 30 nanometer process. This process requires increased mask and lithographic cost. Number of layers of masks are increasing. A single layer is uh, decomposed into multiple layers. So, so this process requires increased mask. DP is an effective way to counter the effects of diffraction in optical lithography. Such situation occurs because the light sources has wavelength of 193 nanometer and the process node is fraction of that. Diffraction effects make it difficult to produce accurately defined deep submicron patterns using existing lighting source and conventional mask. Third corner and edges become blurs and some small features on the mask won't appear on the wafer at all. These are the issues. So three types of methods are there. Litho H, Litho H that is L E L E, Litho freeze, Litho H, L F L E, Pacer or self aligned double patterning S A D P. So Litho H, Litho H. This is the substrate on the device area. There is this one is one hard mask, another hard mask, and this is photoresist one. Photoresist is applied. First hard mask is etched. Again, photoresist is applied. Second hard mask is etched. After that, first hard mask, 
second hard mask here second photo resist and second hard mask this is the pattern created now second photo resist and first hard mask is ripped off and this device layer is etched depending on this pattern created on second hard mask so final edge of the pattern on the wafer so first lithography is done then etching is done first hard mask is etched again lithography is done second hard mask layer is etched finally remaining photo resist and first hard mask layer is ripped off and what pattern generated on second hard mask that is transferred on the wafer or the wafer is pattern based on that so that is litho h litho h now after that litho freeze litho h this is substrate this is device layers photo resist first photo resist layer is pattern and pattern is freezed second photo resist is applied and that is also pattern now this is create the pattern and that is etched and finally photo resist are ripped off so first lithography is done then that pattern is freezed second lithography is done and then only etching is done thus we get the final pattern that is litho freeze litho etch lfle and third method is spacer or self align double patterning that is sadp so here on wafer there is this one is hard mask and photo resist is applied and that is patterned on photo resist low temperature oxide cvd is done and spacer is created and that spacer is etched now photo resist is stripped off once photo resist is stripped off the spacers are remaining there now depending on their position depending the position of the spacers the hard mask is actually etched that is the final pattern that have to be transferred so now depending on the position of hard mask the final pattern is etched that is the spacer or self align double patterning method that is done using spacer this is the third method so we are done with this slide we will move to the next slide triple and quadruple patterning triple patterning is quite similar like double patterning refers to litho h litho h litho h so that is le 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 method requires three separate lithography and etch steps to define a single layer in this process polygons are partitioned into three masks triple patterning is denser although use of three masks create misalignment provides a reduction in pitch increase in expense because of increased process step so here is one layer that has to be transferred three different color scheme are used so that that is mask 1 that is mask 2 and mask 3 in three steps three lithography three etching this will get transferred on the silicon now self aligned quadruple patterning ese QP is the most widely available technology used for patterning feature pitches less than 38 nanometer used to pattern the fins of finfets and dram this process allow lines originally drawn 18 nanometer apart to generate lines which are ultimately 20 nanometer apart able to do high volume lithography compared to uv which has 13 nanometer resolution so these are the steps first spacer deposition and that is first spacer is etched and then core that portion is removed so only spacers are there depending on spacer this first layer is etched this layer is etched now what is remaining on that second spacer is deposited and that is also the upper portion is etched after that whatever remaining of first spacer layer is present that is etched and the first removal and the first layer also that first layer is also removed now second set of spacers are present only now this pattern is much more denser compared to from where we started that is much more denser than that it's more dense that is the final pattern that is transferred on the wafer so this is the saqp or self aligned quadruple patterning method so we are done with this slide and we are done with today's episode we try to give you a touch base of different multi patterning technologies thank you for watching up to this point don't forget to like share and subscribe in case you have any dislike please put it as a comment thank you again and bye for today